안녕하십니까? Nicolas Imida and because it's Christmas, today we're going to learn how you can add a snowfall animation to your website using CSS and a little bit of JavaScript. First, what we are going to do in our HTML is to create a div with a snowflake class. On a CSS file, we're going to style our snowflake. We will make it tiny, 8 by 8 pixels, and we will make it into a circle with a white background color. Done! We now have a snowflake. To hide the snowflake, we will make it absolute and we will move it off the screen. Now we need to animate our snowflake. We want the flake to go from the top of the screen all the way down. And we also want to make it disappear. For this, let's create an animation called fall. We will start the animation from where our snowflake is. So we will leave from empty. And we will animate our snowflake by moving it all the way to the end of the screen and by setting the opacity to zero. Then we will add the fall animation we just created to our snowflake, set it to 10 seconds and see how it looks. Awesome! Now that we are done with the animation, we can remove the snowflake from our HTML because the next step is to use JavaScript to dynamically create snowflakes and randomize their starting point. Before we write any JavaScript, we first have to be comfortable using the math.random function. The math.random function will give us a random number between 0 and 1. A number that looks like this, for example. So if we want a random number between, let's say, 0 and 10, all we have to do is call math.random and multiply the result by 10. Now that we are masters of the math.random function, let's create a function called make snowflake in our JavaScript. On that function, we will create a div element and we will give it the snowflake class so it gets the styles and animations we wrote before. Then we will call math.random and multiply it by the width of the screen and we will use that value to move our snowflake to the left. Finally, we will get the body of the document and we will add the snowflake to it. Now it's time to call this function. To call it multiple times, we will call it inside of a for loop that should run 50 times. As you can see, it works. We now have 50 snowflakes falling down. Because they're all starting at the same time and that looks weird, we need a random value between 0 and 10 that we will use to delay the animation. Now, as you can see, they fall at different times. To get a sense of depth, we also want to randomize the opacity. We want to make some snowflakes brighter than others. Let's get a value between 0 and 1, which are also the minimum and maximum values for the opacity property and give that to the snowflake. We are looking much better now. We want some snowflakes to fall faster than others. For this, we have to change the duration of the animation. So let's delete the animation from our snowflake on the CSS. And back in our JavaScript, we will create a constant of the minimum duration we want the animation to be, which is 10 seconds. And we will add that constant to another random value between 0 and 20, which will be the duration of our animation. All that is left is to set the snowflake animation with the dynamic duration value. As you can see, now some snowflakes are falling faster than others. When the animation has completed and the snowflake has disappeared, we want to remove it from the page. We don't want to pollute our HTML full of dead snowflakes. For this, we will set a timeout using the setTimeout function. The setTimeout function allows us to run our code only after a certain amount of milliseconds has passed. For this, we will call setTimeout with the code to remove the snowflake from the page after the animation has finished. To know when the animation has finished, we can take the duration plus the delay of the animation and to turn it into milliseconds, we can just multiply it by 1000. With this tiny code, we can now be sure that the snowflake will be removed from the page when it has fallen down and when the user can't see it. If we open our developer tools, we can see the snowflakes being removed one by one. To make our snowflakes infinite, just after we remove the snowflake from the page, we will call the make snowflake function again. This way, when one snowflake dies, another one is created giving us infinite snow. To make everything feel even more natural, in the for loop that calls the make snowflake function the first time, 50 times, we can use set timeout again to not create all snowflakes at once and instead to create them after a tiny delay. And that's it, we are done. We now have snowflakes falling down our page at random speeds, opacities and delays. And it looks 
awesome. Thank you for watching this video. I wish you a happy and Merry Christmas. I hope you are surrounded by the people you love. If you enjoy the way I explain code and you would like to learn how to do these sort of things by yourself, then please click the link below where you will find an eight hour free JavaScript course where you will build things like clocks, to-do lists, weather with geolocation, among many other things. That course is for absolute beginners and it is free. Click the link below and I will see you there. Onudo, kamsahago, sanahamida, see you on the next one. Tao me bye bye.